Oh, shoot. Howdy, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Palmisano here. I hope you're having an excellent day, keeping that guitar in your hands. I'm over on guitargate.com. Uh, again, this is how you support the channel. You take my lessons and courses. I say thank you by letting you pick the next song. Uh, and T.M. Lambert, a lifetime member, uh, Todd Lambert, says everybody could use more Warren Haynes in their lives. Totally, completely agree. He says this is an oldie from the benefit show for Alan Woody, beautifully broken with some doves crying and guitars weeping. George Porter Jr. joins on bass. Let's do it. I love Warren Haynes, love Government Mule. And I have heard this song before. I don't believe I've ever learned it. Let's see what we get. George Porter Jr., welcome to the stage. This is such a great song. Stranded out in the cold. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father. Too okay, so he really is doing some prints uh, in here. Awesome. So, so far, we. Harmonically, what, what we're, the, the range we're looking at is A minor. He did a cool thing in the intro where he added in that F to, to make it an F major triad, right? Very cool thing. Down to G major, fifth in the bass, and then he did this E sus to E to make sure we get that G sharp, which again is our leading tone back to A. That's the point of harmonic minor to make your five chord major. There's a great run in there. This is what it sounds like when what a great group. So we got A minor. Something like that, but you got A. Um, I should make sure I'm right. But essentially, A minor triad. Your flat three and five, if you will. Hammering on your four. And then everybody gets through these licks a little differently. Um, uh, based on just how you practice growing up, but he's just working his way over an A minor, right, and a little rundown, and then it sounds like it's D over F sharp, and then to F major, which is really cool. Now I'm gonna listen a few more times to see if it's if that's not exactly right, but that's what I think. Mysterious, floating with the name, all this beauty captured in a frame, visibly shaken, never stirred, drives them insane. Oh, 
so still keeps it on the D. This is such a great song. Again, if you're new here, I do start and stop a lot because I want I, I want to point things out that you could take away. First thing is that when he goes back into this A, it's very clear that he's shooting for not just a lick across, but C major first inversion. So again, first inversion means that instead of having your root in your bass, that would be root position. You have your third in your bass, which is first inversion. So that is C major triad over the note E. Then of course it descends. And then there's that middle part, uh, again, D over F sharp, and then this is such a cool thing. He just walks it down to kind of make this F13, if you will. And then in that middle part, it goes it goes back and forth between F and E, F and E. And, you might, and again, we know that that doesn't chromatically or that doesn't harmonically exist in A minor. But if it sounds good, it is good. And the reason it sounds good again is because when you make your five chord major. You're making the, the third a half step up from a minor third to a major third, G to G sharp, which gives you that leading tone back to your harmonic center, which is A minor. Shipped by the wind. Love that move. Dangerously twist. It's it. So walking up, right, to the major third, grab that C major triad, and then. Yeah. I see the way she cast a spell. It's like drowning in moonlight. A little D minor. Discards them. D over F sharp. There's so many little things happening here between F and F sharp. Okay, that's the story. The story. How do I put it? How do I put it? If I'm learning this song and I'm like, oh man, that part just doesn't sound right. The answer to your question so far seems to be are we Fing or F sharping? And not just in the high parts, but in the bass. This, these constant. Because, you know, D major has an F sharp as the third. So you're never going to have an F major in the same key, right? But again, if it sounds good, it is good. And we're just focusing on these little tiny changes to bring the ear along, to make it interesting, to make it to change the colorful just a little bit so you remember it and so it sticks with you. Watch it. This little walk down here, C major, G over B. You think you're going to A minor, your tonic center, but hits you with an E7 to really push that home, right? But that, so it's these little things like you think you're in key and then it just, it just gives you that little push so we can drive it home. What a great song. By the way, melody comes straight off A minor. Minor third, two, root. And then on the one part, it drops to the fifth there. But you're straight, it, you're straight on the chord. That's what it sounds like. 
See, right there, it does a switch. Same walk down, but now we're gonna brighten it up. We're gonna change it in the chorus. We're gonna go to F now, okay? We're gonna go to F, not E7, and then over to our D. D minor. Hear that F? I'm telling you, the, when you're writing these charts and you're learning this tune or whatever, the things you have to pay attention for, are we F or F sharp? That's those are going to be the squirrels that, oh, the keyboard's playing, but the bass player missed, or the guitar player doesn't even know that that's happening. That's, that's what it is. That I can break her, she's so ready, been so beautifully Warren is such a great storyteller. Uh, it'd be so easy to overplay there. And frankly, I'm telling me here, it would be so easy to focus on the little chord tone moves and sell it a little bit more. But the fact that he keeps it just straight on key center, like a blues singer would and should, frankly, um, it's just a testament to his musicianship and experience in restraint. Let's dig some of this. Coming in, A minor, right? Oh, wow, that sounded funky. Anyway, pushing from the four, D. Shooting right for A minor. Little, little snag on a flat three. Adjust your volume. You can always tell when someone's truly improvising. Even if they play a line they've played a thousand times, it's when they go for something, they realize they're about to overthink it, or they realize they're about to just play to play, and you watch them give it space because their hand goes like this. It goes in and it goes, and then it comes back in and commits. Watch. Do so you see that little? telling you that's that's the move i do that shit all the time right you're like and you go down to play and you're like i could dig in you're like no reset whatever you choose to do five root five flat three little tug back to root yeah Great blue center or key center blue soloing. Four into the flat five. Pull off to flat three. Root. Double tag. Flat three root. Same thing. Going from this root to this root. Going from pattern four into pattern five. So slide from flat seven to one. Switch to your third finger. So you can push through the root. Little things like that, less experienced players, uh, uh, they won't do that. And frankly, you don't really teach people to do that uh, in the beginning, to bend the root, because you really have to get past the flat nine. You can't, like you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta get there. Back into pattern two. One flat three four. Bending straight to the five, not a tease, but straight to the five. Little BB King. Going straight for the upper upper um root. <laughs> a and just with your pinky let it slide off. And 
back to and then get back to singing. Maybe not yet. Let's do I love that. There's little, there's just little touches, right? And then that. Finally, finally, just a little hint at a double stop. Again, root, minor third, flat seven, right there. tell right there that uh, he looks at the band something's happening we don't know what it's going to be but they've discussed it beforehand my guess is they throw in more of the prints here oh, yes. let me show you the look in case you missed it look, looking right at yeah. here I go again. and there it is just like in the beginning switch to that f major triad we haven't done it since Again, from, from someone who's played a ton of gigs with a ton of different people, this is the thing that I'd be thinking about all day. Like, is it F or F sharp? Whether it's the third, the, the, you know, whether it's in the bass, this, this is the, the thing to watch out for. such a great change right there it's such a great change because what is the f major triad it's the top three notes it's the uh flat three five flat seven of d minor triad of d minor seven right so the way that the vocal descends feels like you're going to a four chord. It's got that bluesy sound. That's why it fits with Beautifully Broken. But of course, you know, if they went to F major, it'd be a flat six, but it, it keeps it keeps that bluesy thing like we're going to a four chord, but all he does is just add that triad. Nothing else changes. The Prince was so great that way. Um, and this is such a great tune to drop into this song. Uh, for that reason, or that's one of the reasons. The Porter loves it. Maybe I'm just too demanding. Maybe I'm just like my father. Too bold. Maybe I'm just like my mother. Why do we scream at each other? This is what it sounds like when girls cry. God, Warren's tone is so articulate. Here I go again. 
we're gonna get more. I, we're gonna go through this in real time. Uh, I know you should listen to the whole expression and go back, but I'm worried about video time. In fact, I'm just gonna reset. All right, we're back in. Um, the thing with Warren is he plays guitar at such like a vocalist. It's so clean. It's so key centered. Um, with little things here and there. Um, and it's just like all the little touches and runs that a singer would do. Um, he's, he's always, always been one of my favorite guitar players. Um, let's see if we can get a little of this juice. He's got that look. He's like, here we go. Here I go again. Switch pickup, send it. Going, shooting for G, that's your flat seven. Shooting for one, your root. Right? Love this little move. So, flat three, four, five. Right, going for E and then straight down. The A minor triad. And I love that his, his vibrato is so slick. Love that little, this. It's so easy to just say, shoot right for that C, right? Flat three, but there's a little, that, right before it. Yeah, yeah. Love it. One thing he does exceptionally well too, um, this is something I've been working on a lot as of late, is not letting your string sound and your and your muting, um, not not thinking about it. There's something great play, great clean players do with a lot of gain. Like he's probably crushing his big soldano right now. Is there even in the silence? There's a control of the sound. There's a control of the string. Um, and th just these little slide down. Like when he's here, he's, he's, he, you could easily just hit the vibrato and jump to, right? And, and it works clean like in my environment. But in that environment, it would really be nice if you can control the contour of the sound. Keep keep something fretted, you know? And quick, before the sound has an opportunity for a space, jump into something that sears in the same way and then hold it with a little vibrato and then tag it and then let that be the silence. Love, this. Love that. So now we're we're in the same position. Pattern two, A minor, pentatonic. We haven't left that, but now he's really focusing on that D to E. That was micro bend. And what's cool is that you don't have to know what all the notes are doing in here. Like this is four. Pushing through to the five, flat three, pushing through to the four, but you could very easily undershoot this and play a major third. And but it doesn't matter because as long as you commit to the motion and not and not like to the exact target, but just you never stop. As long as you never stop, you never get stuck. That's one of the keys to these great players is that if you just Never stop your your motion, whether it's a slide or a bend. You never get stuck in that bad sound. You can just keep going or stop shy. And once you get used to using your ear in these contexts, little tiny nuances, Warren is just the master of. All those little going down the finally played something out of the minor pentatonic here. I shouldn't say finally, but like it stands out. 
this little B. There's your nine, but doing these little. Going back into pattern four. Reintroducing that motif that he, that he brought at the beginning of the solo. Always a good idea. Double tag something after you've been into another section. It lets the listener know that, oh, we've heard this before. We're, we've been through this. We've expected it, right? And they don't even have to be a musician to know that's happening, but they know that you're coming back around. Like that, that little slide right there. I'm telling you, that's how you control... That's how you control amplifiers. That's how you can tell... Like when someone grew up, um, you know, doing the doing the the half stack, um, Almond Brothers. Like, do you have a Marshall, the Big Soldano, like thing? Because these little grabs that that yeah that that that, 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 that like I know that it works clean, but those. Those things, in my experience, you come to do over time uh, because you want some space, like you don't want a line there, so to speak, but you want to you want to keep complete control of the amplifier in your hands, and so you keep your hand on something, and you keep the motion, you commit to the fluid motion, but not so much a lick or a melody. <laughs> Doing a little while my guitar gently weeps. Why not? Letting it bleed into the other string. Love it. So many cool things. So, um, I feel like I'm reiterating myself so much. Um, but players like this are so iconic. Um, I know an amplifier player when I see one. The jazz cats, the classical cats, you know, they, they, um, they, every note is equal. Every note is equally audible. Every note has an equal value uh, and kind of like inherent worth. Like a piano, you can play any note and yeah, there are overtones, but one doesn't like eat the other one. When you, when you play electric guitar loud, especially through these tube amps that really, that really you know, get going, um, that isn't the case. Notes bleed into each other. You know, the, the 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 major third always wins. It will always eat the minor third. Um, there are some things which will just always create more sound as a double stop than other double stops. And one of them is this classic one where you're pink, you got your pinky on the flat seven, and you're pushing through from the four to the five, and everywhere in between. This four flat five five is this whole ocean of microtones. This, right? You hear it all? That would be relatively insignificant um, if you were just playing something really, really clean. It like it wouldn't work well in jazz environments. Like it just wouldn't. It, like it's just it's it's not something that elevates in that environment but when you're pushing tubes and you're th and 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 you're playing like the amplifier is the race car and this is the steering wheel um that is something that blooms it's something that fills more space and creates more power than a single note ever could and 
It's so great to see something so simple and so powerful be saved until the end, right? And I know you guys might think I'm overselling it, but everybody out there that knows what I'm talking about, drop it in the comments. That shit is true. Some guitar players, like, every note needs to be equal, and every note needs to be clean, and, that's, and, the, and it's genre-specific. And the heavier and heavier and heavier you get, the more the contour of the sounds, the notes that you choose that, that work, are very much dictated by the amplifier and how it all interacts. And in this high power, but not necessarily high gain environment, you know, with these big 100 watt tube amps, but they, it's not like we're playing metal or something. These little spots where you can make these microtones bloom, it just fills out the room and the PA, and, and it just makes the band explode. Just watch it again in real time. <laughs> Here he's picking a lot, but he goes up and down, up and down. He's feeling he's 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 feeling the contour of the wave from the amplifier. I'm telling you, this is amp driving. <laughs> Yes! That grab with the bruh, 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 with the snare coming out of there. I hope that was improvised. I bet they do that all the time. Um, maybe there's a tag for those of you that have seen a bunch of these shows where you know I, I missed Warren looking back. Maybe the camera was off, but that was special. Everybody loves it. Great stagger stop. There's your key. All right. Todd Lambert. Todd, thank you so much for being a member at Guitargate, a lifetime member, um, and picking a little government mule beautifully bro broken for our next YouTube video. Um, anybody that wants to be like Todd, first link in the description. Um, you get all my lessons, all my courses, so it's step by step, not, you know, watching the video and you're seeing like, you know, guitar to rents. Um, key takeaways are, um, one, those two songs go together really, really well. That, that little addition of the F and the A minor triad, uh, you know, perfect implication of the four chord, um, and it just like, it works with that song so well. Um, there's a lot of harmonic movement, but for the most part, you are in the key of A minor. The things to watch out for are, again, are we F for F sharp, and make sure that if, if the bass and the keys are voice leading, that you are too, right? You see Warren down here? Thumb, thumb, thumb. Always be voice leading. Know what time it is. Know what everybody's doing. If you hear some wobbliness in your mix, it's going to be somebody effing and someone f sharping, probably. Um, watch out for that G sharp um, when you go to E7. But if you noticed, Warren never hit that, or he bent th bent through it, but he never landed on it on a melody. He stayed true to blues key centered soloing form, left lots of space and let it sing like a vocalist would. And he's a tremendous vocalist, so that makes sense. He's one of my favorite players. His technique is flawless. It's so unique. There's so much you can learn from people like him. Um, and one of the things that I've always loved about everybody that comes through that kind of Allman Brothers lens, they all are such, they're such amplifier drivers. It just, it's, it's what I connect with. There's, it's so loud and clean and simple 
and memorable and powerful. And that's the stuff that really gets me going. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit subscribe. It really helps the channel, helps the algorithm. Drop in the comments where, um, you know, what you think, uh, anything I might have left out. And uh, again, uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you do so by clicking the first link, joining Guitargate, um, taking my step-by-step -step courses. There's over a dozen there. And, um, and to say thank you, I'll let you pick what comes next on YouTube. That's it. Have a great day. I love you all. Cheers.